You know how to book flights and hotels. All you're missing is a tool to plan the travel experiences you'll have once you arrive. That's why you need Viator. Book guided tours, excursions, and more in one place. There are over 300,000 travel experiences to choose from, so you can find something for everyone. And Viator offers free cancellation and 24-7 customer support for worry-free travel. Download the Viator app now and use code Viator10 for 10% off your first booking in the app. Find travel experiences for you. Do more with Viator. What's the easiest choice you can make? Window instead of middle seat? Picking a vendor who sends a great gift basket? Outsourcing business tasks you hate? What about selling with Shopify? Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash try. Go to shopify.com slash try now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash try. Hi there, and welcome to Comedy Album Book Club, the podcast where we listen to a comedy album and then talk about it. I'm your host, Jason DeLine, an actor and comedy enthusiast, and in addition to the album discussions, I, along with my producer, Matt Ardill, also interview members of the comedy community. Today's interview is part of our Juno series. The Juno Awards are Canada's answer to the Grammys, an annual recognition of musical artists that started in 1970. 2019 is the second year to present awards for Best Comedy Album after a 33-year-old hiatus for the category. Today, I talked to Juno-nominated comedian Pat Thornton about his album, Chicken. All right, guys, I'm sitting here with Mr. Pat Thornton. I've actually... I wanted to ask you, is, is is that middle end just silent, or is the pr- correct pronunciation Thornton? I guess it is Thornton, but yeah. it's, that's so, like, uh, laborious that, like, <laughs> yeah. everybody just says Thornton. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you just sort of roll past it. It's there, but it's like a hint. You it's know? a hint. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's an extra small end. <laughs> yeah. Thorn- Thornton. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I can't, I, if I'm thinking about it, it's hard for me to say. I, I stop. Thornton. Thornton. Yeah, yeah, because it feels like it stops the word. Yeah, uh, Thornton. yeah, Thornton. Yeah, people have misspelled it my entire life. I bet they have. Is it? Uh, do you know the origin of it? It's. Uh, I mean, it's it's English Irish, and it's. Uh, uh, it just means from the thorny estate. Yeah, lots of yeah. thorns, a ton of thorns. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what a stupid. Joke. <laughs> yeah all right cool well welcome pat thornton i'll be saying that now forever uh, <laughs> well as often as i say your name which is uh, from time to time uh so congratulations on your juno nomination so much. that's super exciting yeah and uh so you recorded this if i'm not mistaken at comedy bar mm-hmm. november of 2016 that's right so why'd you sit on it i uh oof. I uh, I just didn't listen to it for over a year. Yeah? Did you I feel weird about it? Of, uh, yeah, I don't get anxiety about performing, mm. but I definitely get anxiety about, like, putting something out in the world. Right. You know what I this mean? This is finished. So, this is good. This... Yeah. So it's like my first album, and I waited, like, already too long to do it. Right. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then I was like, this has to be great. Right. <laughs> and then I was so convinced that it couldn't be that I, uh, which was... Which is strange because like the show went fine. It went good. Yeah. Like it was it was good. It was very good. And then uh but I just in my own head was just like, Ugh, not this. <laughs> I don't want to sit and listen to my own voice for a long time. Right. So uh I just waited forever to even listen to it. And then and then all I had to do on it, because I had a my upstairs neighbor uh like cut it up for me and stuff. All I had to do was like a paper edit, like just sort of mark the times oh cool kind of stuff which when i actually sat down to do it like over a year later <laughs> it took the time it took to listen to the album you know what i mean really like, yeah yeah, yeah. 
the, was there much cut out? Like, <laughs> no, there wasn't enough a, a ton to cut out. There was a joke that I dropped because I missed a a line that I really like. Ah. I was like, this isn't the joke without that line. I'll record it later for something. But um, that's all I I dropped, and then there were just like little pieces in between, like just like ums and, and sure. stuff that we took out. But uh, but yeah, it was just one of these things where I um. Where when it, everything is just like left to you to do. <laughs> yeah, you know? right. Yeah. And you know, you're the only like, one that you're uh, accountable to. No one's pushing you to do it. Absolutely. Nobody right? cares yeah. about my career <laughs> than me at all. You know, like, like you imagine these ideas of like having like a manager sure. or something who just like tells you what you're supposed to be doing all the time or a record company who's like record something and then, and then they let you know when it's coming out. Yeah. But that's. And we need you to have that's done it what six weeks from today. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and other things happen in between too. Are you? Uh, oh, yeah, I'm sure yeah. it felt like you'd kind of already done it once you've done the show, right? Right. And then, okay, well, now there's other stuff. Yeah. Then now you're, yeah. you know, like you get busy with a bunch of other stuff, and you always have to make money and, and yeah. do whatever. So uh, it's easy to put it on the back burner, particularly because you know it's my voice. It's like I, right. the last thing I want to listen to in the world. <laughs> Have you done any of that material again since, or was that sort of the end of that? Uh, I've done some of it um, a few times when I, like, get booked to do a long set or whatever. But mostly, um, since I've recorded it, I've just focused on on new stuff so that I can... I'm, I'm hopefully recording another one in May. Oh, amazing. Yeah. So we look forward to that in 2021? Yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, now you've seen that the the paper edit is so fast, you'll probably get on it. Yeah, right yeah, away. I'll, I'll probably get on it. That uh, it's a guaranteed Juno nom. And getting a Juno nom sort of <laughs> it's a good uh, kick in the butt. Yeah, it boosts your confidence and go. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Maybe uh, maybe t- people do want to listen to this stuff. But maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you waited. We did wait for the right year. Maybe yeah. maybe that year there was too many other yeah, good maybe. albums. You're like, uh. <laughs> maybe, yeah. <laughs> you came in at the right time. Yeah, it, it, actually, <laughs> if I if it uh, had come out right away, then the comedy category wouldn't have even been back. Oh, at the Oh, that's yet. true. Yeah, it was new yeah. last year, wasn't it? Last year was the first yeah. year. Yeah, there have only been like five winners of the. Uh, comedy Juno. Yeah, right. And uh, it's like Air Force and like Rich Little. And- right. <laughs> <laughs> and this, yeah, there's a weird big gap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then possibly Pat Thornton. <laughs> yeah, then Evan Decker won last year. And then, right, uh, yeah. And then somebody, one of us. But um, mm-hmm. the, um, the category's hot this year. No stinkers. Yeah, so no, we'll for sure. It yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. Do you do you keep up on uh, local comedians, or do you, do you do you have time to listen to other people's stuff? Or um, I'm I'm committing to listen to uh, everybody's album that's nominated. Because, cool. Because um, because I just because put the I pressure that, on you to do so. Yeah, if you uh, <laughs> on the off chance that I get uh, that I win, I want to be able to say they're all great. Yeah. <laughs> I actually listen to them. It'd be you know neat if I mean? you did one joke from each of their albums to. <laughs> I wonder how they'd react. <laughs> That'd be such a weird thing. That'd to be do. funny if I sort of gave them notes during my speech. It was like that would be great. Hey Dave, what, what was that riff on track four? Did we need that? <laughs> I think that might be kind of expected though. Like the comedy category, it's got to be funny. Yeah, yeah. And if any, if a comedian can't take a joke, well, actually, a lot of comedians notoriously can't take a joke. Yeah, that's, <laughs> but, true. Uh, that's true. Cool. So, but it was a good night. You had, you felt good. You felt supported. I imagine it was a packed house with your friends, yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. it must have been yeah, amazing. Right. Yeah. Was, um, yeah, it's, it all felt good. We recorded it uh, twice, um, at like seven and nine, and then, uh, um, but there was so much like there's a weird buzz on the seven o'clock one, and it was oh. like some like Korean radio station coming in on it or something. <laughs> but yeah, there uh, just in like a couple spots, there's like uh, just an interference where oh. someone talking absolutely not English. And you're like, whoa, what is this? Um, so, so it's the it whole was nine o'clock show. So my oh, album wow. was the nine o'clock show. Wow, uh, which is good. It was. I was probably gonna just use stuff for the nine o'clock anyway. It was just mm. a hotter show, but um, mm. but I had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> was there anything in that first show that you you would have liked? To, is it like a nice moment or crowd interaction or anything? Or uh, I hard to tell. I didn't yeah. give it a a, a real listen. Because, yeah, fair enough. Uh, because it seemed pretty useless. Yeah. 
That is nice to be able to use one, though. I, I, I know that there are various albums out there, and they edit it in different ways, and then sometimes you'll hear, like, halfway through, this crazy horse laughed person is just now in the second half. And you're like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, but it's, yeah, it's yeah, nice yeah. to have a cohesive kind of thing, and yeah. it feels like one Yeah, you can hear the, the same laugh throughout. And stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's super cool. Did you guys, do you know if you, like, mic'd the crowd as opposed to just having your mic pick that stuff up? Uh, they're, they, Sirius XM recorded it for me oh okay cool um so i think that they they brought a bunch did of stuff have in. Some, some like mics in the house because they cool. yeah it they, sounds great I mean, it sounds nice yeah, yeah the whole thing sounds amazing and that yeah. that's that's a nice thing about having you know someone like serious to yeah. help you out with it right it doesn't yeah. sound like you did it in your garage or something like yeah. that yeah super uh do you remember uh when your first introduction to comedy was uh either an album or a, or like something you watched on tv or why you got into this the um i would say that uh I started watching Saturday Night Live um, pretty religiously from like age 10. Age 10, yeah, uh, that's pretty young. And uh, Dana Carvey was the star. Right, so right. Oh. And like, yeah. you could do no wrong for me. And now I think he's so cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. now I think yeah. but at the time, he was a superstar. Like, he was just totally. out in the front of the cast and, and could do anything he wanted. And it was, uh, it was crazy. It's crazy how much... Um, uh, comedy changes like that for for people. You know what I mean? Like he's like I watch that stuff now, and I'm like, okay, I <laughs> love this. Like I loved it. Like Almost, I recorded yeah. it and watched it over and over again. Yeah, and yeah. it was all like it's it was all based so around big. like stupid TV shows. Yeah, like uh, massive head wound Harry. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, then yeah. You have like a yeah. big super like a title and a song. Like, yeah. Why does this have to be a show? I remember the uh, um, uh, when he played this like singer who did a song called Chop and Broccoli. Oh yeah, classic. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a huge one for me. It's such a Chop. weird moment. Uh, <laughs> Chop and Broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> he did that again. He did that again on the Dana Carvey show, and I think uh, yeah. he did it on an album. And he did it on the the most recent was it the forty year uh, anniversary oh, yeah. thing? Yeah, yeah. And like I, when I saw it at the forty year anniversary, I was like, I remember this. And then I thought, so many people watching this don't know what this is. And yeah. it's just this weird. <laughs> It's such a weird thing. It's not something that belongs in Saturday Night Live as a rule. Like, to just yeah. cut to a guy playing a piano. I mean, he did gutsy stuff, and he was always committed. Well, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was very good at the gig. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he was very, um, uh, yeah, very animated and very brave. Totally. It was, it was great. But I, uh, uh, <laughs> comedy's just changed a lot since then. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's weird to look back on it. Um, I think that uh, Mr. Show is the number one influence. My life, oh wow! I think, okay, because cool. it was this thing that I, when it came out, you started to sort of follow all of the like L.A. comics that were involved in that show, right? And you're, sure. Like, and that's the first time I it sort of realized that these people do everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're right. doing sketch here. They're doing stand up. They're doing they're right. doing everything. And it was just sort of this this new like breed. And uh, um, and they were just so like so silly and. But they felt hungry to perform, didn't they? Like, yeah. they were always just out there. They weren't like yeah. a typical sardonic, yeah, Friday and Saturday did a set, it sucked. Like, they were living and breathing yeah. comedy all the time. Yeah, and I yeah. think that... Uh, um, new kinds of comedy. Yeah, new kinds of comedy. It was great. And I feel like that's what uh, what Comedy Bros. done now has sort of built that kind of breed. That was sort of like triple threat. Like, people that try everything. Right. You know? And it's, uh, it's cool. Do you have any favorite comedy albums or albums that really influenced you yeah, yeah? i have uh oh if you, um, we can take a, a break if you want to look something up or one thing. There's a, there's a mm -hmm. but the uh another album that i one album that i really really love and i've listened to a number of times is called nine sweaters it's by oh uh, andy daly okay i don't know and it's so it's fantastic it's just him playing oh, like nine different characters oh so, cool doing stand-up or in different situations or? uh not like Telling like stories, monologue type pieces. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. But they're so funny. Have you done any of that character uh, monologuing? Uh, I do this one bit that I, uh, I've, some of that. I do this one bit that I really like, which is, um, uh, okay. There's this legend that when uh, Tom Hanks was making Saving Private Ryan, he uh, when he got the script, he took a red pen and crossed out like sixty percent of his lines, and like just thought that the character should be way quieter. <laughs> So I do this thing where I 
uh, perform a monologue verbatim from Saving Private Ryan, and then I do it again <laughs> with the with the, uh, leave the pauses dialogue the... that I assume he took out of it. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and That's it's hilarious. Uh, and then it's it's all about him being very kinky. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say it's probably wildly inappropriate for yeah. the film. Uh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, okay. Hold on. Let me. I really want to look up this Pop Dogs one because yeah. I was actually at the. Um, uh, this may be the audio from his special because it's certainly the same material. And I was at the taping of the special. Oh, wow. And it was. Uh, Did you become a fan of him through Mr. Show or. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's what it is. Laboring under delusions, fantastic. But all all his albums are good. I like impersonal a lot as well. But yeah, I haven't spent a lot of time uh, listening to albums. My um, my dad really liked uh, Bill Cosby albums when I was little. Mm -hmm. Nobody's listening to those anymore. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the, yeah, but I, 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 that was one of the earliest ones that I, I don't remember which one it was. Uh, but uh, I, I listened to a couple of Bill Cosby when I was young. It was some of the first stand up I'd ever been exposed to. It wasn't on TV like yeah. it is now. Yeah. And uh, I loved it at the time. It still felt like it was for people older than me. And to me, still does, even if there wasn't the controversies. It's Something it's he fashioned. did all the time that I, that I love whenever anyone does it on an album is um, tell a joke that's so visual. That's like, uh, <laughs> where he's like, and it was this big. You know what I mean? Like, but it's, uh, it's good. It's actually, like, it sounds like a mistake. But I think it's actually good because... It makes people like wish they were there. Like it makes people mm. go, "Oh, that would." What is that? You know what I mean? Like, uh, I, to an extent, I think. Yeah, I, I've definitely heard bits go on too long where I have no idea what they're doing yeah, on it's stage. Like a face is the yeah. yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, stuff like that where you can you're you're forced to use your imagination a little bit is fun. You're engaged in, yeah. in a different way. But yeah, I, I I think about that sometimes. If and and, I want, and maybe you can answer this. If you thought about how accessible this stuff was audibly like i don't oh, you don't strike me as a very right. physical comedian anyway right. yeah yeah uh, but is that something that enters your head like will this uh, work on uh yeah, i mean but we, but yes i i think that i was just confident that the that you can get the jokes just by hearing them yeah 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 yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. another album say uh, when we were on tour my friend tal had a um a bernie mac album that was and the thing about Bernie Mac is that he was a complicated figure. He's like, like, there's some homophobia. There's, a, there's right. some other stuff that's sure. not terrific. But man, what that man just dripped funny. <laughs> you know, right. he just every right. the way he said everything, like, yeah, tone of voice, crazy. Uh, do, how do you feel? Uh, comedy has changed since uh, since Humber. Like for you, have you had to evolve as a as a stand up? Uh, um, I mean. Yes and no. I think everybody has to evolve. Uh, like, I think the, like when I was starting out, it, everybody goes through a period where you're like, uh, where you're just sort of poking at it to see what you can get away with. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Where, mm -hmm. where your stuff is like, uh, like dangerous on purpose or <laughs> yeah, right. whatever. When, and then, uh, or trying to subvert everything. Like yeah, the stupid yeah. thing about stand up comedy is, and like, yeah, try to yeah. turn it on its head or something. Yeah. Yeah. You just, you just go through all these phases before you can like sort of, uh, uh, find a voice. Um, so, I mean, I've, I've gone through, through all of that, but, but where I landed like a while ago, I'm not, uh, I'm just not a comic who's, worried that the world's getting too pc <laughs> i'm just not yeah. that comic i've just never right. been that comic yeah. i mean like except like i said the first couple of years of of stand-up when i was just trying everything sure but um did you go through a period where you're trying to be edgy do you uh, yeah, yeah 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 i mean real early on but yeah and where does it come from now like it seems like you enjoy the surreal but also yeah, observational stuff just too? my life you know I mean, yeah. like like i do jokes about my wife and about my dog and 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 whatever i um i've i've settled more into uh you be more relatable if you if you're mm. just talking about your life and also um also i always try to uh and it's not every single joke like that seven private ryan jokes not really tethered to anything but um <laughs> uh but mostly i try to tell jokes that are uh directly related to my life because 
uh there's much less of a threat of uh parallel thinking you know like, sure yeah like, um that if it's about me then it's actually then it at least it's like my own take on my own life you right. know what i mean and instead of like so to make a joke about sandwiches, anybody could have made that. Joke, so know? did you purposely name your dog Chicken just so you could use that <laughs> <laughs> as a unique? <laughs> no, the uh, the um, the Chicken joke that the album's named after is about the um, is about a, a real story. Where I know uh, the story. Like, yeah. I don't know if you want to give it away here. You can. I'll, I'll just all give right. It away. All right. Decide whether or not you want to keep it. <laughs> yeah. um, but yeah, it's just a real story where I uh, I ordered KFC, uh, and then when I opened the door, my dog just ran out past the guy. So I kept yelling, "Chicken! Chicken!" I love that. Uh, Get in here, chicken! You belong to me. The guy's like, "Yeah, you paid for it. It's it's coming, chicken." That's great. But so why did you name your dog Chicken in the first place? Uh well, honestly, we um uh we got the dog in Hamilton and we were uh just driving home and we just kept uh saying weird words until we <laughs> settled on one that we that we could both agree. It's on. oddly charming. It was almost <laughs> named computer. <laughs> it's almost named tennis. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, it's chicken, yeah. That's great. But it's weird because a, a lot of people assume that it's like it's not related to anything. Like it'd be, it's funny to name an animal a different animal, you know what I mean? But a lot of people thought that it was like that. I thought my dog was a coward or something. Oh, man, I don't. But um, what kind of dog is he? Uh, just a pure mutt. Like uh, uh, paperwork said terrier mix. There's just a, like a black medium sized dog it has like three types of hair on it. <laughs> it was a Hamilton Street dog before we got. It. Oh wow! Yeah, cool. Yeah, she cool man. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about Filth City. Oh, Filth City was a uh, was an experience. <laughs> uh, um, Filth City is uh, it's, for anyone that doesn't know, it's a um, like a satirical take on the uh, Rob Ford um, uh, crack scandal. And I play a Rob Ford style character named Tom Hogg. And uh, it was uh, it was great because, um, you know, as a comedian, oh, it's so very rare that somebody would like would come to you with a role like that where you get right. to play kind of a villain and yeah. and do all this uh, crazy stuff. I got to shoot a machine gun. I got to do a lot of stuff. <laughs> it, was, it was like a really... Uh, fun interesting experience um also because there was like dramatic parts to it and i just hadn't done that and i just they, they just sort of pushed me off a cliff with it you know what i mean it yeah. was great what did you done beforehand i know you were in sunnyside but uh, yeah and I, I sort of a sketch show here yeah in, it's, i've done a few um things i was on a, a show on ctv called satisfaction for a season oh yeah and uh i had a show called hotbox which was also sketch but i i'd only done really sort of silly comedy stuff before right. that. Uh anyway, it was a it was a an absolute blast. And cool. um uh and then we got a ton of death threats from coordination. <laughs> that was fun. Right. <laughs> <laughs> does that still happen anymore? Do people discover it and uh, is it, no, is no. It... We had just one crazy weekend. Yeah. Um okay. Doug Ford went on T V on C P twenty four and said that he was gonna run the director down with his car. And then, wow. uh, and then he just like worked up all these people who were, who were just tweeting at us and messaging us forever, saying that they were going to protest the screening and all this stuff. Nobody wow. protested, but it was huh. just like, like I said, one crazy weekend where we were like, "Whoa, what is this?" Was there yeah. any acknowledgement that the, that the, does the movie ever like sort of say this is based on true events or anything like that, or is it just no. its own thing? If no. you know, you know, but yeah, 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 it's definitely satirical. Like it's yeah. definitely. Um, uh it's sort of like like when law and order sort of rips something from the headlines but then right. the writers go and write their own story you know what right. i mean and that's that's what happened this isn't the these aren't the things that happened uh yeah they're a bunch of a bunch of other stuff it's just sort of a a, a starting point that people recognize fair enough yeah. and has it led to anything else for you is it or do you, do you feel like it's uh 
kindled an interest in more dramatic stuff or do you want to pursue no. that or, no? um <laughs> no i mean uh i i'd like to do a, a lot more of everything but uh no in uh there's a you can in canada it's easy <laughs> to not uh make any kind of impression at all right <laughs> <laughs> you no, know like it's true it's like true we had, there's no like, momentum here that was uh like i said it was the it was the craziest time when the okay so the movie played at uh at the canadian film festival um and it was the like the same the same week as the one year anniversary of rob ford's death oh wow which uh wasn't planned by anybody sure. that's just when that festival is and they made right. this movie for it right so then that made the, the unfortunate family coincidence and i yeah. get it yeah i get it it was just an, a really unfortunate timing yeah um so because of all of that the uh the press exploded that week right we got we were doing interviews with everybody we were uh uh and it's so strange because in canada it's so hard to get anyone to cover something like a, like right. a film or whatever but we got all our press like too early like that didn't they didn't uh the movie wasn't coming out anywhere it wasn't right. doing anything it was just having one screening at a festival right it was a buzz no one could act on yeah yeah, yeah. and then there, but people couldn't buy tickets to it or whatever right. it was one screening that was sold out to a casting crew you know what i mean like <laughs> <laughs> like it was just uh so there was like no momentum to gain from it but mm. um it was a it was just a crazy time and then it, it like like there was an article about me on the front page of the toronto star and there was a minute where i was like Oh, is this gonna lead to a ton of acting? Right. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. You go Canada. back to auditioning and no Canada's creating. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, you just gotta keep working. Have you thought about going down south? Uh, I have spent a lot of time in LA, and I've uh, I've just spent all my money there and not yeah. made any. So uh, I there's a good chance I'll try that again, but um, it's tricky. It's a, it's a it's a lot. Yeah. 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 And you and you kind of have to go all in if 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 you really want to commit to it, right? Like you got to get either the green card or the permit and be yeah. there, be there, right? For the there, opportunities yeah. and yeah, it's tough. Yeah, I have like a, a manager there and just been useless because really, anytime I talk to him, he's like, "You should be here." Right. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> nice to talk. To <laughs> do you tour through the states? Do you do you perform there? No, no, no. I don't. Uh, um. I don't really tour. I'm, okay. um, I play, I, uh, I worked for Yuck X for three years and, uh, and then I was done. Yeah. That's a, that's its own animal, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And so sort of like the, I'm playing a club in Hamilton coming up, but it's very rare that I play a club. Even I do most of my stuff around Toronto. I play comedy bar a lot. Cool. Um, corporate stuff. No, not no? really. I don't, uh, uh, I sort of make my money from uh, or piecing it together from all over the place, sure. writing, writing and acting and and other stuff. But uh, I don't. I'm not the, uh, sort of the the working road dog comedian. I've right. never, never been attracted to to corporate work. Though the people I know who do corporate stuff have like cottages, <laughs> yeah. and stuff. You know right. what I mean? It's, yeah, it was like just Jessica like Holmes or someone like that. Like, yeah, yeah, she's doing great. Just, like it's like i just never felt like that was for me mm. um i just sort of do stand up because i want to and then um uh and now that i put out one album i've, I've like this is what it is it, it's right just create material and put out albums yeah this is well it's great we have the technology like to have serious now yeah actually paying comedians for their albums serious is, is pretty awesome a, a really wonderful thing for us they yeah really, um uh like so many comedians make more money from serious than they do from comedy from like live comedy right at all, you yeah. Know what I mean? yeah uh and it's uh it's great it didn't exist that uh, yeah. until like seven years ago or something and it just key it's a great cycle because people are audiences want it it's yeah. a great thing to listen to in the car it's, yeah, yeah 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 awesome yeah. what do you got coming up uh I don't know. We when can cut the, this out if there's no. <laughs> yeah, I don't know when this this oh, airs. I or whatever. I uh, I'm doing the, something at Sketch Festival. I'm doing uh, um, I'm doing a show at the Junos. Uh, right. Yeah. 
So yeah. what's, what's that like? Is it, is this a surreal experience to be part of the Juno? This is insane. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. The um, uh, so with the uh, the sand exchange stuff, like the serious uh stuff, I was just not only did I wait forever to put my album out. I also waited forever to fill out the paperwork so I could get paid for my album. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so like that money is like about to start coming in. Oh, wow. But, uh, so there's nothing more underwhelming than like putting out an album because, um, you just sort of gently push it out into the world and yeah. nobody buys albums anymore. Everybody right. streams them. So that album's made like, a hundred bucks in sales or something. Right, right. <laughs> so, uh, so like I uh, like did this thing, uh, just sweated about it for a year. They put it out, and then I was like, "Oh, well, that's nice. I got a hundred bucks." And then, uh, <laughs> and then a year later, I'm nominated for a Juno. It's insane. I mean, like, like I, I, uh, you have to like apply, um, to the Junos. Sure. So I, I did that, but um, you never. A Juno? That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, like it's a, probably the biggest comedy award you can get in Canada. Well, the thing about the Junos uh for me is that uh for everything that I've done in my life, the Junos is the first award I've been up for where people know what it is. Right. People I like the <laughs> Canadian Comedy Award, you have to like explain it. Right. And be like, no, that to us that's a deal, man. That's yeah, a yeah. big deal. Or yeah. like uh even like even like when the Gemini's became the Canadian Screen Awards, yeah, most of Canada has no idea what the Canadian Screen Awards is, no. even though it seems pretty self-evident. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's all in the the well-chosen three words. Yeah, yeah, but most people are like, "What? Okay, great." You know, like, uh, but Juno, people are like, "What? Whoa!" Yeah, I've known about a Juno's my whole life. You know, right? Um, and Canada respects its musicians. That's true. In a way that um, it doesn't, uh, well, because of CanCon or whatever, they're, mm. they're just mixed in with everything else, right? Yeah. So you like, you just, uh, and obviously, like, like with television, it, uh, it's uh, like a budget thing, you know, like, like America just spends so much more money on, on TV shows. They just look better and they're sure. whatever. But it, what, it, they can albums, afford the losses in a way we can't. Yeah. Albums, it's just such a uh, um, more even playing field. Uh, so we've always uh, mm. liked our Canadian band. So we've always respected the Junos and stuff. So uh, so just being attached to that is insane. Very cool. Well, I look forward to your music career. <laughs> you, you, Jan Arden has a better chance of being in a sitcom than you because she's, <laughs> the way we promote our... Uh... <laughs> she's got one, yeah. <laughs> that joke didn't come out right. It just sounded mean. <laughs> you know what I was trying to say. Anyway, uh, thanks for sitting with us, uh, Pat. This is a treat. Um, you know, normally what our show is, is we listen to an album and then we talk about it with a panel. So maybe in the future we'll talk about Paul F. Tompkins or something if Great. you're into that. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, good luck at the Junos. Thank you. And uh, if anyone wants to follow you, you tell jokes on Twitter at... Uh, at Pat Thornton. With Remember that N. That middle N. Key. <laughs> All right. <laughs> My thanks to Pat Thornton. Make sure you subscribe to Comedy Album Book Club to listen to the other interviews and episodes. And our next album episode will feature our guests Grace Smith and Ryan Hughes. We'll be discussing Simply the Beth by Beth Stilling. Until then, I'm Jason DeLine. Thanks for listening to Comedy Album Book Club. You know how to book flights and hotels. All you're missing is a tool to plan the travel experiences you'll have once you arrive. That's why you need Viator. Book guided tours, activities, excursions, and more in one place to make your trip truly unforgettable. Viator has over 300,000 travel experiences to choose from. Everything from simple tours to extreme adventures and all the niche, interesting stuff in between. So you can plan something that everyone you're traveling with will enjoy. Real traveler reviews give the inside scoop from people who've already been on the experiences you're considering. So you can plan with confidence. Free cancellation helps you plan for the unexpected. And 24-7 customer support means you can travel worry-free. Download the Viator app now and use code Viator10 for 10% off your first booking in the app. Find travel experiences for you. Do more with Viator. 
Looks like you need a vacation. Enter the five-hour energy Where Will the Tide Take You sweepstakes. You could win a $10,000 Dream Beach vacation. Imagine jet setting off to a tropical paradise. Having fun in the sun or diving at a gorgeous reef. It's up to you. No purchase necessary. Go to 5hetide.com for official rules and to enter. That's 5hetide.com. Enter today. Ends June 30th, 2024.